Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this video we're going to be finishing off this mini-series covering the fifth installment of Solid, the Dependency Inversion Principle. Obviously, as always, if you don't know what that means, we'll get into that in the video. I've already made an example of code that doesn't use this principle and I'm going to explain, as always, you know, what can go wrong with it and how to improve on it and then we'll refactor and then I'll put it on GitHub and you guys can have access to it if you want to and so on and so forth. You can always comment afterwards asking if you didn't understand something and I can try and clarify that for you. But yeah, let's get into the video. But of course, first I got to thank my patrons, a special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Art Farrell, Buddha Ray, Remy Baldwin, and Phil Baum. If anyone else here is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link is down below. If not, then there are also links down below to my social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. All, the, all those links are down below. If you could help support me on those, it would be greatly appreciated. But now let's get into the video. Before we get into any code, I just want to read the definition off the Wikipedia page, and then I'll explain what that means. So. Dependency inversion principle is that one should depend on abstractions, not concretions. What that means is when you make a class in Unity, just a normal class and you put logic in there, whenever anyone refers to that class or references that class, they know how it's uh, implemented, right? How all the functions work because all the code's there. The thing is, classes themselves that have dependencies on other classes, it's better to have references references on, a, on interfaces, sorry, um, because with interfaces, you define what a class has, but not how a class does the things that it does. So that's what it means by depend on abstractions, you know, depend on the data being abstracted away rather than concretions, rather than concrete implementations, okay? We'll get into an example, so don't worry about that. Okay, so for this example, I've just made a cube that takes an input and moves around, you know, it's quite simple. Uh, the code for that's over here. It's also quite simple, it's just speed variable we take an input into a vector free, but we pass the horizontal to the X and the vertical to the Z because we don't want to move up and down on the Y. And then we normalize it so we don't move faster diagonally. And then we times by speed, obviously to go you know faster or slower based on our speed. And then time to delta time to make the movement frame independent or frame rate independent, sorry. And then we just say, all right, move. It's quite simple, but we want to make this better because there's plenty ways you could make this better and more flexible and expandable. I mean, I could just throw these words out, you know, flexible, modular, expandable, whatever, but it, it's all true. The point is with this class right now, we are kind of stuck because there's logic in here that you might use all over the place. You might have, you know, different things that have speed, different things that move, different things, you know, so on and so forth. I know this is very generic, just a mover class. You're not going to have like a mover class in your game, but the point is right now we are stuck to the concrete implementation of you take input off the axes, so, you know, keyboard input essentially, and then we move based on that. But there's so many other things that you might want to do with this that would be awkward to add to it. So for example, um, as Jason Wyman or Unity 3D College, the other person, he's like the other Unity YouTuber who does a lot of um, kind of programming pattern videos. In his, he had like a spaceship controller with like turn and thrust and stuff. And yeah, he mentioned that well, what if you want to have AI, right? right? Let's say you want to have AI here. Now, I don't mean nav mesh, I mean AI. Like you write some code that perhaps gets the player's location and you know calculates how much to turn based on where the player is and whether to go faster or slower based on if you're close to them or whatever, right? You might want to have that logic somewhere. But what you'd have to do is you'd have to write a whole new class for that logic and you'd have repeated code. You know, you'd have movement times speed at times time dot delta time, you'd have all this again, you'd have transform translate, you'd have repeat code, and obviously another design pattern thing or just uh, kind of principle to go by is dry, which is do not repeat yourself or don't repeat yourself. So, you know, if you have code that's in multiple places that does the exact same job in the exact same way, then pretty much always there's a way to refactor it so that you can share that logic. One dangerous thing about not using dry is that um, when you change logic or functionality in one place, you've got to change it everywhere and it makes your life become a misery and then also you might forget to do it in one place and it breaks and so on and so forth. Now, one good thing about dependency inversion is that it's really easy to test your code. Now, I'm not going to set up a whole testing scenario for this. I've done previous videos on testing, but with this, you can actually um, mock for the testing different um, abstractions so that you can, for example, uh, if you have a mover here and we expect, you know, if we hold W for this many seconds to move this far, well, in the dependency, in the, sorry, the testing, you can actually pass in your own custom input or like perhaps you could pass in saying, um, the problem is during tests, you can't have input, right? So how do you move things that need input? Well, you can actually just mock the input, which is its own topic entirely. I could actually do a video on mocking. I probably will do that. 
you know, I'll keep that in the back of my mind for a future video. But what I'm going to do now is basically refactor this to make the moving class not depend on the concretions. So, for example, here we're dependencing, we're dependencing, we're depending on the input class, right? We are, we have a dependency on the input class. We are taking input here, which is obviously breaking a uh, single responsibility as well because this class is taking input and moving. That's a problem. But also. It's not even just that, it's the fact that what if we do want, you know, different input methods, whether that's AI movement, maybe movement off a different controller or something, you might have to have a different script for that to handle that movement. So it would make more sense for us to just have reference to an I uh, input giver or input supplier or whatever you want to do, right? Um, and then we don't care how that input getter gets its input. We just say, I want something that can get input to be able to move, right? So we're going to start refactoring that now. I'm just going to make a few more scripts and then we'll start writing the code for that. Okay, so what I've gone ahead and done is I've changed the mover script to be mover bad. I've not touched any code there. I'm leaving that there so you guys, when you get the project, you can see how it was originally. Um, keep in mind, by, say, by, by me saying bad, I don't mean it's like actually bad. I just mean it's bad in terms of it's it's not following this principle. So it could be better. You know, sometimes you can over-engineer. One sec, I just realized I've, uh, what have I done here? Keyboard movement dot copy. Okay, what I've done is I've made constant movement over here, which we're going to have to write. I movement input getter, which is going to be an interface, which we'll obviously put the methods in in a second. Let me zoom in for you guys. Then we got keyboard movement, which is obviously what we already had. We just want to abstract it to here. Then mover bad, and I've duplicated mover bad to be mover good. And then obviously from there we can refactor this. So we can change this now. So what we want to do is we want to first of all make it so, well, back in the scene, we'll change the cube to use mover good. Now keep in mind, because this is Unity and not like a normal software project like web development, for example, we don't, we're don't we not going to actually use proper dependency injection. We're just going to use like a different method of doing it. So normally you would have like a higher class that would pass the dependencies, uh, pass the dependencies down to the lower classes. So for example, um, I might have like a main script on here that holds references to all the different parts such as the mover or the attack or whatever and then passes into those what uh, whatever it needs and obviously you could you know store those in a prefab or a switchable object or whatever you want right but you or you could load them up from a file i guess but what i'm just going to do simply is just tell the mover that it wants reference to a private i movement input getter and then we'll just say movement input getter right whatever so we store a private reference to that, and we're just going to say on a wake or on start, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll say on a wake, movement input getter equals get component i movement input getter. So what we're saying now is, or what we've managed to abstract is this movement input we're doing. We're going to get rid of this now. Okay. So this part, well, we'll just say that and that. We'll just put it as a, a zeros for now, right? What? C daisy. Okay. So we've got. No movement here. We've we've taken out the input. This class no longer gets input, but we know we need input of some kind to move. So we're just saying, I want someone that can get me input. Okay, just give me someone that can get input. Now keep in mind, mono behaviors don't have constructors, right? You can't pass through a dependency in a constructor for a mono behavior. So there's there are different ways to do it or like workarounds. So one way is you know if you're using mono behaviors on that script on that component, well then you can just um, use get component, right? So you can say, oh I want a i movement input getter. I don't care what it is, just get me the one. And obviously you could check after it saying, you know, if it's null, then uh, whatever, you destroy the script or don't work or whatever. But I'm just going to, for the sake of this example, assume it does exist because I'm going to put it on there. Um, so yeah, we've got a private I input getter. We're going to get it here. And then we're going to say, all right, well, what do we need from an input getter? Well, we need to get horizontal and vertical, right? So we want a uh, float horizontal get and if float vertical get, all right? So all this means is anything that has an I input movement getter interface has to somehow give us a float called horizontal and a float called vertical. We don't care how or what that even does or how it works. We just know that it exists. So we're gonna say here, we want the movement input getter dot horizontal and the movement input getter dot vertical, right? So now in here, we aren't getting input, we're just reading it from whoever's giving us the input. I don't know who that is, but you know, whoever it is, thanks for giving us the input and we're gonna use it here, okay? And then, you know, if you want, you just put that as an expression. I, I just like doing that for single line of things. We'll keep the speed in here, because I think it makes sense the mover could store the speed, but you could also put that out to a scriptable object to store the speed settings, which is good for 
tweaking values during runtime because they'll save, but yeah. What we want to do here is we want to say, well, constant movement, we'll do that second. We'll do keyboard movement first. Is an I um, movement input getter. We're also going to make it a mono behavior. Now we could even abstract that further if we wanted to, just use normal classes. Um, and then you would have to, well, call get input on it every frame or something. But for this, I'm just going to say, no, keyboard movement is a um, normal mono behavior. So every frame, we're going to say, well, horizontal get get uh, oopsie daisy what is going on here uh, uh, uh. ah there we go okay so every frame we're going to say horizontal is equal to input dot get axis raw horizontal and then vertical is equal to input dot get axis raw vertical now that's not going to work because i've said it's a get but not a private set. You know, we need to be able to set it privately. So, whoops, see Daisy. That's happy now. And the even though I've said it's to get private set, but the interface says get, it's fine because it it does what it says it's going to do. I've just added a little bit more to it, but that's fine. Um, because obviously we need to be able to set the values. And you know, even then you could um you could extract these out into a function called like you know get input or something, right? Apparently that didn't actually set the name here though. But that works. And then every frame, get input. It might be easy to read. I don't know, it's up to you. Point is now we have this horizontal and vertical. So if we go to the mover good and we say we want keyboard movement, right? So you're, you're now the designer deciding what dependencies to have. Well, I'm saying I want keyboard movement. Okay, well I have keyboard movement now. I'm moving my keyboard. But let's say we wanted a solid, uh, not solid, a... Um, <laughs> constant movement like I've got here, right? Well, this is also a mono behavior then. Uh, make sure to put a colon and import Unity Engine and make an I uh, movement input getter. So this needs to now have its own way of getting input. So whenever we request horizontal, well, I'm just gonna say return um, return one, one F, I mean, it doesn't really matter. And then for vertical return, um, 5f or something. Now the actual like va uh, magnitude of these values don't matter because um, it gets normalized anyway. But the point is, we now, if we wanted to move constantly, use a different movement script. We just attach that one instead, and then now it moves constantly, right? So, and the, obviously the speed depends on this um, mover. The mover script has the speed, but the the script that gets attached to it has the logic. So now we've got this movement script that doesn't actually get input anymore. It just passes on that. Um, the dependency is not up to him. Like he's just like, I want an iMovement controller getter, whatever. I don't care how I get it. Now, if you wanted to take it even further and not have the mono behavior on the object, you'd have to have another mono behavior be like the core of the mover thing, and then that would decide which uh, class to pass in, and you could make these non-mono behaviors. Like this one could easily just be a non mono behavior anyway, but you'd need some way of passing it in. So you would have to do it in another script called like a bootstrapper or whatever. Um, if you've done web development before, you, or if you've done C sharp web development specifically, because that's the only one I have experience with, uh, you have a uh, setup.cs file, which is where you set up your dependency injection and services and so on. So that's like what, that's kind of what you'd do. If you want to, guys, go have a look at Zenject. Um, Zenject is in the asset store and it's online. That's a dependency injection framework for Unity. If it suits your needs, then you know feel free to have a go of it. There are there's a YouTuber called Infallible Code who's done a lot of videos on it and he knows more about it than me. So you know if you want to actually look into that, you know go ahead and go check out his channel. But yeah, I think it's good enough like this to be honest. This for Unity, this is what like the the whole point of um, components uh, composition over inheritance. You know you compose your game objects with scripts that work together and so those scripts don't have concrete implementations you know i this class the mover class doesn't have a clue how inputs got just that input can be get got words english anyway yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video and this mini series now that's over feel free to ask any questions on any of the five videos i'm going to get back to doing you know normal unity videos from now on um and also feel free in the comments of my videos to uh, point out if i ever you know Stop following solid and that what I should be doing because you know sometimes it's hard to force yourself to follow the rules, but if you do, it makes you know better code, cleaner code, and so on. 
Okay guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already left a like and subscribe, it'd mean a lot. Check out all the social media down below, as I said earlier. Um, yada yada, YouTube, YouTuber stuff. Anyway, see you guys next video. Goodbye.